Okay, retouching images, page 173. There are many techniques you can use to clean up an original image, from using any of the healing tools to that old standby, the clone stamp tool. In this lesson, you will retouch an image. So we want to go ahead and open 05. Well, you can take a look at 05 done. We're not going to open that one. So using the clone stamp tool, one of the problems with old photos is that they most likely contain a large number of defects. These defects can include watermarks, tears, and bold marks. There are many different ways to fix these defects. One of the most useful is the clone stamp tool. The clone stamp tool lets you replace pixels in one area of the image by sampling from another area. In this part of the lesson, you'll use the clone stamp tool, and you'll also have an opportunity to explore the clone source panel. So we're going to go ahead and open, um, we're going to browse and bridge and find 05, this old photo that needs to be fixed. And we're going to save it as... work. Okay. Um, you'll first experiment with the clone stamp tool. Don't worry about what you what you do to the image at this stage as you'll revert to a saved image back to the other one when you're done. So page 174, click the zoom tool and drag, click and drag the marquee around the top half of the image to zoom in closer to the face. Okay, so zoom and we're going to click and drag here. So we can get closer to the face. I'm going to get rid of my swatches panel here. Um, select the clone stamp tool, and that is right here. Position your cursor over the nose of the girl in the image and hold down the Alt key. Your cursor turns into a precision crosshair. Uh, when you see the crosshair, click with your mouse. You have just defined the source image for the clone stamp. So right here, I'm going to point at her nose, hold down the Alt key, see how it changes the cursor does, and then I'm going to click. That is now my source, okay? Now position the cursor to the right of the girl's face, and then click and drag to start painting with the clone stamp tool right here. <laughs> pretty pretty cool, huh? Um the source that you defined is recreated where you're painting. Watch carefully as you will see a coinciding crosshair indicating the area of the source that you're copying. Press the right bracket key to enlarge the clone stamp brush. All the keyboard commands you reviewed for the brush tool will work with other painting tools as well. Type 5 change the opacity um, and start painting with the clone stamp tool again and no notice that it's now cloning at 50 percent so over here I'll start it's a little more faded it's not as as direct but it's still using the same source uh, type 0 to to, to, to go to 100 um, percent opacity uh, to return it and then uh, you've completed this experimental one so we're going to go file revert to go back to the last saved version, which is from the beginning. Okay, so now we're on page 175. You will now repair the fold lines in the upper right corner of the image. Select the Zoom tool from the Tools panel. And if it's not already selected, check the Resize Windows to Fit checkbox in the option bar. Resize windows to fit. By checking this box, the window will automatically resize when you zoom. Click approximately three times in the upper right corner of the image, right here. There you will see fold marks that you will, you, you will repair using the clone stamp tool. Select the clone stamp tool from the tools panel. Right click on the image area to open the brush preset picker. Right click. Click on the soft round brush and make it size 13.
then hit enter. Position your cursor to the left of the fold mark, approximately in the center of the fold, like maybe right here. And click to define that area. Hold down the Alt key. We get the the bullseye there and, and click one time. That is defining our source. Position the clone stamp tool over the middle of the fold line itself and click and release right here. Depending upon what you're cloning, it is usually wise to apply a clone source in small applications rather than painting with long brush strokes. Press the left bracket several times to make your brush softer. This way you can better disguise the edges of your cloning. Continue painting over the fold lines in the upper left corner. As you paint, you will see crosshairs representing the sampled area. Keep an eye on the crosshairs. You don't want to introduce unwanted areas into the image. So when I click and drag, see my crosshairs is down there to the left. You want to be careful what you're painting, okay, to, to make sure you don't get any unnecessary or unwanted areas of the picture. Um, it is not unusual to have to re redefine the clone source over and over again. You may have to alt click in the areas outside of the fold line repeatedly to find better matched sources for cloning. You may even find that you alt click and then paint and then alt click and paint again until you conceal the fold mark. Don't forget some of the best selection techniques that you learned in lesson four. Um, you can activate the edge of the area to be retouched so that you can keep your clone stamping inside the image area and not cross into the white border. So right here, for instance, I'm going to scroll over here. Um, this is uh, a little darker here, so I'm going to alt click and paint here. Okay, and then now this is a little lighter, so I'm going to alt click and paint like this. Okay, um, up here, I'm going to alt click here and paint over this. Okay, um, with the clone stamp tool, it's important to sample tonal areas that are similar to the tonal area you're covering. Otherwise, the retouching will look very obvious. So let's save, control S, and now page 177, the history panel. You can use the history panel to jump to previous states in an image. This is important. Um, this is an important aid when retouching photos. In this section, you will explore the history panel as it relates to the previous section, and then continue to utilize it as you work forward in Photoshop. Um, window history, which we know is right here. Okay, or you can go to the window menu and choose history. Um, grab the lower right corner of the panel and pull it down to expand the panel and review all the states, which mine's already there, but you can point here and click and drag to see all the states of the image. You may see many clone stamp states or a listing of any function that you performed while the image was open. As you click on each state, you reveal the image at that point in your work history. You can click back one state at a time, or you can jump to any state in the panel, including the top state, which is the state of the original image when it was first opened. You can utilize this as a strategy for redoing work that does not meet with your satisfaction. If you need to redo some of the cloning that you did in the previous section, click on a state in the history panel for your starting point and redo some of the work. All states in the history panel are deleted when the file is closed. If you want to save a state, click the Create New Document button to create a new file at the present history state. So, you know, we've, you can see how you can go all the way back to when it was open, or you can go back down to the point where you left off. Uh, page 178, the spot healing brush. The spot healing brush tool paints with sampled pixels from an image and matches the texture, lighting, transparency, and shading of the pixels that are sampled to the pixels being retouched or healed. Note that unlike the clone stamp tool, the spot healing brush automatically samples from around the retouched area. So with this file open, we're going to go to view, fit on screen.
and we're going to select the zoom tool and then click and drag the lower right corner of the image. Because you do not have to define a source with spot healing tool, it can be easier to retouch. Um, it is not the absolute answer to every retouching need, but it works well when retouching sections of an image that are not defined and detailed like blemishes on skin or background. So we're going to select the spot healing brush tool, the band-aid, right here. and then click and release repeatedly over the fold marks in the lower right corner of the image. Click and drag, okay. Um, the tool initially creates a dark region indicating that the area is to be re retouched, but don't panic, it'll blend well when you release the mouse. Now using the spot healing brush, repair the fold lines. Use a history panel to undo steps if necessary. You can experiment with the brush size. Sometimes a smaller brush size works better with this tool. So let's go ahead and finish fixing this. Okay. Um, and I'm going to move, I'm going to slide over here and finish this. In these, it's magical. Okay, and let's go Control S to save or file save. The healing brush tool also lets you correct imperfections. Like the clone stamp tool, you use the healing brush tool to paint with pixels you sample from the image, but the healing brush tool also matches the texture, lighting, transparency, and shading of the sampled pixel. In this section, you will remove some defects in the girl's dress. Make sure that you have this file still open in view fit on screen. Select the zoom tool and then click and drag over the bottom area of the girl's dress. Click and hold the spot healing brush in the tools panel and choose the hidden tool, the healing brush. So right here, the little arrow there, click and hold that. And we want to do the healing brush tool. Now paint over the fold line that is closest to the source area you defined. Oh, we got to define our hold area. Hold down the alt key and click to define the source for your healing brush tool. Well, I'm at number four. Position your cursor over an area near to, but outside the fold line in the skirt. Maybe right here. Hold down the Alt key and click. Now paint the fold line that is closest to the source area you defined. Okay, I could probably do a better job here. I'm going to do Alt, click. Okay, you can see how that's working. I need to do Alt, click here to better fix this. Here we go. Um, repeat the process um, across the dress. Then paint over the fold lines using the healing. Don't forget to change the size using the left and right brackets if necessary. Okay, and save. Control S or file save. Using the patch tool, you may find that there are large areas of scratches or dust marks that need to be retouched. You can use the patch tool to replace large amounts of an image with image data that you sample as your source. In this section, you will fix the large dusty area in the upper left part of the image. Um... We need to fit on screen. Select the zoom key and then click and drag um, in the upper left corner of the image.
Hold down the healing brush tool and select the patch tool. Click and drag a selection to select a small area with defects. Then click and drag that selection over an area of the image with fewer defects to use that as a source. Click and drag a selection to select a small area with defects. Okay, so like, you know, right here is kind of, we're going to click and drag like this. Okay, so there it's selected. Um, then click and drag that selection over an area of the image with fewer defects. So I'm going to point here, click and drag with fewer defects right here and let go. Um, continue to make selections and patch with the patch tool to clean up most of the dust marks in the upper left corner of the image. So control D will deselect and then um, like right here, let's see where else, I don't know, there's a bunch here, we can do this. And then I'm going to drag it to here. And now those spots are gone. Um, and I'm going to do Control S or do File Save. And then page 181, using the Clone Source Panel. When using the Clone Source Panel, you can set up to five clone sources for the clone stamp or healing brush tools to use. The sources can be from the same image you're working on or from other open images. Using the clone source panel, you can even preview the clone source from painting and rotate and scale the source. In this section, you will clone the upper left corner of the work file and rotate it to repair the upper right corner of the image. You will also define a second clone source to add an art deco border around the edge of the image. So we want to fit on screen. Um, window clone source. The clone source panel displays five icons which represent a sampled source. You will start out using the first clone source. Choose the clone stamp tool. Let's see here they are five. Choose the clone stamp tool right here. Verify in the options bar that the mode is normal and opacity is 100%. Yep. Press the right bracket until this clone stamp size is 80. Okay. Um... Now I'm on page 182. Click on the first clone source icon in the clone source panel and position your cursor over the top left corner. Click on the first clone source icon right here. And position your cursor over the top left corner of the image. I'm going to do control D to deselect that too. So um, hold down the alt key and then click to define this corner as the source. Um, way up here, even in the white area. Um, Alt, right here is where I want to click. Okay. Um, if you zoomed into the upper left corner, hold down the space bar to return your tool. Okay, we don't have to do that. Uh, when you're positioned over the right corner, um, check the show overlay checkbox. When you are positioned over the right corner, check the Show Overlay checkbox in the Clone Source panel. Okay. It's checked already. A ghosted image of your clone source is displayed. And you can see that here. See how it's showing that? Okay. Um, if necessary, hover over opacity in the clone source panel and drag it to a lower level. Let's maybe instead of 100, let's try um, 70. See what that looks like. Okay, it's a little less defined, that corner. 
Note that you can uncheck the clipped checkbox to see the entire clone source, but for this example, keep it checked. Okay, now type 90 in the rotate text field in the clone source panel. Okay, it's this one here. And we want to type in 90. Verify that your brush size is approximately the width of the white border. Okay, so I want to make my brush size smaller. Um, I'm going to use my bracket keys to do that. And actually, I'm going to make mine round. Mine's like a left-handed one. It's weird. There we go. Um, verify the brush size. Okay, with the border, you can preview the brush size by positioning your cursor over the white border. If you do not see the brush size preview, um, you may have your caps lock key on. So I'm, I think I'm good here with that size. Don't worry about aligning with the original inside. Make sure the corner's aligned with the outside of the underlining image. Um, start painting only the corner with the clone stamp tool. Okay, so right here. Well, I'm going to go back in time because that doesn't look good. Um, notice the preview. I'm going to get my opacity back um, to 100 so I can see it better. Okay, control Z, I'm going to click here. Maybe I will change the size of my brush to something a little smaller. Maybe I'll redefine this starting point um, right here. Alt click. Okay, see how my source is moving down? Um, so I'm going to want to click maybe here. Nope. See where my source is at? I don't want that. Um, I'll redefine my source right here. Alt click. There you can, it's not perfect, but you can see it's getting better. And then I want to do an alt click again. Okay, anyway, it's not perfect, but you can see how that works with redefining your source. Um, start painting only the corner with the clone stamp. Notice that the corner is added back into the image. Uncheck the show overlay checkbox to see your results better. So let's see. And again, alt click. Okay, um, it just takes some practice. So let's go ahead and save it, control S. Uh, cloning from another source. Um, we're gonna browse and find 06.